Hello people, let's move on with our lectures on differentiation and today we'll study about limits which I introduced in my last lecture and today I'll just move on with that. First of all, let me tell you the definition of limits as it is given uh, in Wikipedia. Well, it is stated that in mathematics, a uh, limit is a value that a function or a sequence approaches as the input or index approaches some value. So, well, that's kind of a foreign language to you, but let's just explain it with a graph. Let's consider that we have a function uh, here y is equal to x square and I have just plotted a graph that's a parabola uh, passing through 0, 0, which uh, I seem to not have written here but we do not need that too. So I'm trying to find out the value of the function at x1 which we all know that is x square. Now what do I do? I do not directly go to x1. right? I move from x1 minus h to x1. x1 minus h, h is a very very small number. Like I go into the neighborhood of x1. I go near x1. Like if x1 is 2, I go to 2.1. At that value, I try to find the value of x. And we know that if I try to find the value of x at 2.1 and another value is at 1.9, then the value has to lie between them. Right? In some cases, it may not lie between them. But in most of the cases, it has to lie between them. So, instead of going at the value and calculating it, I'm trying to calculate the value by approaching to that uh, x1 from other other sides. So, as I have written that at x equal to x1, the value of the function approaching to x1 square. Because when I do x1 minus h whole square, let us just uh, see what happens. I write x1 minus h whole square. Now, h, h, is, h is a very very small number. And it approaches 0. So when I open this bracket using a minus b whole square formula, I get x1 square plus h square minus 2x1h. Now h is so small that h square is very very small than that. We know that when there is a number less than 1 and we square it, we get a more smaller number. So I can cancel out, I can cancel out h square. And thus I get here um, x1 square minus 2x1h. Now I can say h is very very small, right? It's very very small. So I can neglect this too in condition that h approaches 0 and thus I get equal to x1 square. So I'm trying to say that x1, h is so small and I'm looking in the neighborhood of x1 that it comes out to be x1 square but I'm not directly going to x1. That is the point here. So the value of the function approaching to x1, in other words, the value limiting to x1 square rather than going at x1 square. Now let us take another example which is most probably taken when we study limits. And that is the uh, function x square minus 4 upon x minus 2 or any function like x square minus a square, uh, x square minus a square over x minus a, like that type of functions. Now we need to find the value of y at x equal to 2. Let us solve this question. What we do as per we do it, I try to, we know that y is equal to a function of x. So I just put x equal to 2. Right. When I put x equal to 2, mm, yeah. uh, when I put x equal to 2, I will get y is equal to 2 square minus 4 upon 2 minus 2. 2 square as we know is 4, 4 minus 4 over 2 minus 2 and a very absurd answer comes up to us that is 0 by 0 which I told you about the indeterminate forms. It is an indeterminate form. You cannot tell what the number is to be. It may be 0, it may be 1, it may be 1.1, it may be infinity. Right? It can be any number which we do not know. So how do we calculate that? That's when uh, limits come into picture. Limits help us to find out uh, limits come in more precious times when we try to find out the value of indeterminate forms. Obviously, we cannot tell by just looking at 0 by 0 that what is the value coming out to be. So, for doing this question, I try to limit the value, right? I try to move from 1 to 2 and from 3 to 2. Like I am going in the neighborhood of 2. I am not taking so close values but still we will get the value. Like at 1, when I put the values 1 square minus 4 upon 1 minus 2, I will get minus 3 upon minus 1 which is 3. And when I put 1.5, I will get 3.5. I 
when I similarly go to the positive side, I get 2.1, 2.5 and 3. When I put 3, I get 5. When I put 2.1, I get 4.1. As we see that the limit, the function is tending towards 4, right? So we can say that the y, the value of y at x equal to 2 is 4. Then how do we calculate that? How do we come to know about that? Then we come to the actual operation of limits or actual calculation of limits, which I've given here. We write limit, this is the notation of limit limits, that uh, we write limit, right? we write full limit L I M E M I T or I just write L T and then X approaches to X arrow to which means X is approaching towards 2 but not equal to 2 so I write X approaches to F of X equal to limit X approaches to X square minus 4 upon X minus 2 now I just use the formula A square minus B square and I get X minus 2 into X plus 2 then we see there is a common term uh, there and we cancel both of them thus we get uh, Thus we get limit x approaches to x plus 2 and when I put 2 in x we get 4. So we see that using the concept of limits we also get 4 and using cal normal calculations also we get 4. So that is the concept of limits. We try to find the value of a function at a certain point without even calculating it or with, uh, with say, seeing the neighbors the value of uh, the function at the neighbors of that value. When we are not able to calculate the value of that function at that point either it is indeterminate or for some other reason we cannot calculate it. So that is the basic part of functions and it is very important uh, in terms of uh, differentiation is concerned. So we will come back in the next lecture with a little more ad advanced concepts of limits in which we will learn about Lopeta rule which is more important for as far limits are concerned. Thank you.